I'm giving this out as well. This is the Hebrew, but not so much because of what you have. You have Hebrew and English, but there are sheets in the back that are related. I want to show you. So here's more copies. And um, does anyone here not have a copy of the English or anything? Okay, Mrs. Yaffe will soon bring more copies. It's mainly because of the pages in the back that we're going to be referring to as we move along. Okay. Yesterday we started the Mimer. And the Mimer is um, explaining the tribe of Usher. Thank you. The tribe of Usher, that the word Usher, the name Usher, the tribe of Usher is related to the Indian of choice and praise. And and it's uh, alluding to the fact that Yidin are fortunate that they chose Hashem and that Hashem chose them. And it starts off with the Bible to understand, first of all, which is the primary thing, it seems to be a contradiction, is it that Hashem chose us or that we chose him. And second of all, how does choice apply in such a situation? We're making a choice between Hashem and Lahamdo. Uh, about the Zara, which is non existent, which is just a fabrication, nonsense. So, in order to explain this, he starts with a medrash. And the medrash gives a mushal. We know that a medrash will only give a mushal when there's something very deep here and needs a mushal. So, the mushal is that the king came to a certain country, and with him he had ministers, three different kinds of ministers. And when it came into the country, there's some people that said, oh, I'm going to make a connection with this minister. Others said, I'll make a connection with the second, and others with the third minister. This word is going to keep coming up in the mind. Pikach means someone who's smart, clever, perceptive. He was able to see through everything, and he said, I'm choosing the king himself. And what was his reason? Because all the ministers could be replaced. And the king, he's, he's forever. And the rabbi has two questions. Question number one, you have to be like an exceptionally smart person to realize that the king is greater than the ministers. A little child knows that. And the second question is, the reason why a king is greater than the ministers is not just because the ministers could be replaced and not the king, but because the king in essence is just a much greater personality than ministers. He's in a much higher level. That's why he's the king. So in order to answer these questions, there was, and, and what's the mushal? The mushal is that the nations of the world choose the ministers. Some choose to worship the sun, some worship the stars, some worship the constellations. And the pikach is B'nai Yisrael. And we say we're only worshiping one, which is Hashem himself, the king. So now it goes into where does Abu Dazara come from? Where does that mistake come from? You didn't get a copy yesterday? Okay, Mrs. Yaf is bringing up more copies. Okay, so 
We are now on page. <clears throat> One ninety six. So the Rebbe says that the people originally, the first people to worship Avodah Zarah, they didn't deny that Hashem created the world. They knew Hashem created the world. What was their mistake? Which was Avodah Zarah? <clears throat> their mistake was that they felt that Hashem gives, and they also knew that Hashem gives us sustenance through the stars and the constellations and the sun and the moon and the, everything else. But they believe that these forces have independent choice. And therefore, they said, and again, this phrase, try to remember, it's going to keep coming up in the Maimer. Chamra lemara tevusa shakya. The wine belongs to the owner, and the thank you goes to the waiter. Which means the one who is really the owner and the one who's really in charge is Hashem. They recognize that. But a little bit, there's a little bit of a choice that's made by the waiter. Like I said yesterday, in Gashmis, how soon he'll bring you the food, how pleasantly he'll put it down on the table, uh, he'll accommodate you if you need something, you're missing something. All these little details is from the waiter, even though in general, everything is from the owner. So Hashem is definitely in charge. Hashem is definitely the one who gives it to us. But the stars, the moon, the sun, the constellations, they have a little bit of a choice. And therefore, they worship them. So let's go to that part now, 196. In the Hebrew? <clears throat> yeah, let me tell you one second. So those of you who have the Hebrew, it's in Eis Gimel. Well, the first word on the line is Belachim. That's what we're studying now. Am I? Um, a little bit further. A little bit further, which is, look at the, the last word on the line is Lefi. We're starting by the end of that line. The Gam Ki Lefi. So first of all, they thought the reason why they worshiped them was to say thank you. That's number one. They felt they have to acknowledge what they're doing for us. Like we say thank you to the waiter. For Gam, another reason why, why they worship them, the feet of Usam, according to their mistake, the way they saw things, Shakechov and Mazolos Hembalat Khira, that they have the choice. Khashru, so they thought. By worshiping them, you'll give them more. Like if you're nice to the waiter, okay, he'll bring me another portion. Nobody's looking. We'll go to the kitchen, get me another portion. I want the, the top, the bottom, the, the steak, this. He'll, he'll, he'll do things which is going to benefit me. So they think by giving thank you to them and worshiping them, they're going to give me more because they have the choice to do whatever they want. So this is called the basic level of Avodah Zarah, basic. But from this, what evolved was a bigger mistake, a worse kind of Avodah Zarah. We said, this led to committing a grace of a bigger sin. They made even a bigger mistake. I guess this is like a later generation, because when you start going down, it doesn't stop. It keeps going down lower and lower. Hashem abandoned the earth in the hand of the stars and the constellations. Again, those of you that have the Hebrew, if you want to look at the Pasuk inside, I think you should. It's on page 21. This is the source for this. These are all quotes that are very often quoted in Chassidus. It's based on this Pasuk. So it's a Pasuk in... <clears throat> and it, it's underlined on the top of the page. And it's talking about people doing things which are inappropriate. Why? Look at the end of the passage, because they say, Ein Hashem, son. Hashem doesn't see us. So they do it in their room privately where no one sees. Ozav Hashem as they say, Hashem abandoned the land. Hashem left the land. He's not involved. 
That's the, that's the next level of Avodah Hashem abandoned the world by Nogas Haaretz. We were racked by him. And the world is being run and controlled only by the stars and the constellations. So what's the difference between the first one and the second one? The first one, which is the owner, the wine belongs to the owner, and the thank you goes to the waiter, is implying that Hashem is running the world. But there's a little bit of a space for the waiters to do something. So the constellations and the stars have a little bit of independence, a little bit. The second saying, no, a little bit. They're running the whole thing. Hashem created the world. And then he said, now I'm giving it over to you and you will take care. And this would be compared to Melech Shemina Sorim Laniga Samadina. Think of a king who appointed officers and ministers that they should run the country. That's the way it always was with a king. Today we don't have kings, but you can picture it in the same structure as a president. The president doesn't run the country. Each state has a governor. He's in charge of each country. Now the governor doesn't run the whole state either, because in the state there are many cities. So in each city, there's a mayor. He runs the city. And the mayor doesn't run the city either. In the city, there are many different districts and different people, and different people are in charge of different departments. The mayor oversees everything in the city. The governor oversees everything in the state. The president oversees everything in the whole country. And that's the way it was with the king. So you have a king and he appoints officers and ministers and they're running the details. Even though the fact that they have the authority to run the country is because the king appointed them, they don't deny that the king is the one who gave them the authority. Nevertheless, but after the king appointed them, and after the king delegated authority to these people, who runs the actual day-to-day -day things in the country is the ministers and the officers, not the king himself. The king himself doesn't get involved. On a rare occasion, if there's an extreme need, then the king gets involved. But generally speaking, they're the ones that are involved on day-to-day -day level. And it's not because they're doing something against the king. On the contrary, that's what the king wants. The king doesn't want a minister that's going to call them up every second and say, should I lift my right hand or lift my left hand? Should I walk here or walk there? Should I say this or say that? The whole purpose of, of appointing an officer is that he should make his own independent decisions. I mean, the same thing with everything else. I say in business. There's a person who is a billionaire and he owns 20 stores. He can run 20 stores. So he hires a person to manage each store. There's a manager for each store. Does he want the manager to make his own decisions? Or he wants the manager to ask him every little thing what to do. That's, he doesn't need a manager for that. The whole point of having a manager is Dapka that he makes his own independent decisions. That's the way the king appoints these ministers. They should Dapka make their independent decisions. That's the meaning of the second level, the worst level, that Hashem abandoned the world. It means he removed himself and he gave over the running of the world and the management of the world to the stars and the constellations. <laughs> In the Gemara, it says, it's a Gemara, that the non-Jews, they believe in Hashem, but they also believe in idols. And what do they what do they say? They call Hashem the God of all gods. When we say these words that they call Hashem the God of all gods, this is a phrase and a quote that includes both levels that we mentioned before. Let's see how. Shagam also those people that believe. Shaoz of Havaya Sa'orits. Even those that believe that Hashem totally abandoned the world in the hand of the stars and the constellation, they still call Hashem Why? 
No Yisim Lezesh, who is Bar of Gavayim, and Vishalat Aleihem. First of all, they believe Hashem is like, they believe those gods are strong, but they believe that Hashem is the God of all gods. He's stronger than all the gods. And if he wants to, he can overpower them. But they also recognize that the fact that there are other gods and the fact that they have the Kayach, the Hanegas Haaretz, to be the ones to run the world and to give the world sustenance, they realize that other gods don't have the power on their own. Hashem is the one who gave them the Kayach. So it means even those that say Hashem abandoned the world and left it in the hands of the stars and the constellations, but Hashem gave them the power to do what they're doing. The Dugum Sari HaMelech, like in the marshal of the officers of the king, Shaman Higim and Samadina, they're running the kingdom on a daily basis, but it's because the king appointed them. They recognize that they're appointed by the king. So therefore, the Kodal Akaya is something which could be used for the lower level of Abu Zara, the worse. But it could also be used for the higher level of Abu Zara. Now, the other group, they say that Hashem is running the world. So why don't we say Lakaya? But it's also considered Lakoda Lakaya. It's also considered that they're looking at nature and the stars and the constellation as gods. And Hashem is the God of all gods. The mere fact that they acknowledge that they can do certain things in their own choice and they have the will, the choice, free choice and independent power to do it. It's in shlita, that is a certain measure of authority. And therefore they're attributing alakaya, they're attributing godliness to the stars and the constellations. So what's true amuna? How is it supposed to be? Page 199. How do we negate the concept of other gods? It says in the Torah, don't bow down to other gods. How do we negate that in an absolute way? By the knowledge. All those meteors to which Hashem does things in this world, whether it's the stars, the moon, the sun, or the constellations, it's only an axe in the hand of the chaplain. And they have absolutely no choice. So the three terms there, which represent these three levels, one is kigazim yada axe in the hand of the chaplain, that's the true amuna. Then there is the second level, which is not as bad, and that's Hamra Lamara Tevusa the Shakya. The wine belongs to the owner, the thank you goes to the waiter. That, but is that um is that something that we should that we should acknowledge? No, that, that's something which is a well deserved. Right, okay. Because as, as long as we're attributing some independent choice that's <laughs> other than Hashem, that's a deserved. <laughs> and the third level, which is more pure about the Zara, that is when you say Hashem abandoned the world altogether and he's not involved, he lets the stars and the moons and they run the world. Based on what we just now said, we can have a better understanding of the of the Mashal. We can understand the wisdom of the person that said, I'll choose the king. The fact that you didn't recognize the truth. That all the intermediaries, that through them Hashem gives his sustenance to the world. That comes as a result of their intelligence, of their great knowledge and understanding, and the way they perceive things the right way. And that is Shem Reimus Apnimius. They see the depth of things. They see the inner truth of things. Because the chitzeni is, if you look at the things from the outside on the surface, nira, it does look like it looks like that the stars and the constellations, the sun and the moon, they're the ones 
that make the difference of how things are happening in this world, whether we're going to have a cold weather, whether we're going to have a warm weather, whether it's going to be uh, windy, whether it's going to be uh, the fruit or the crop in the field will grow properly or not. Clearly, it goes according to the sun, the moons, and the constellations. So it looks like that. It looks as if the hashpa is from the stars and the constellations. <clears throat> in other words, that they have something in them that makes them, um, they have the, the, the quality, they have the, the capacity to do this. So it's as if they have something in them that they could also be leaders and, and people, and not people, they could be leaders and control the world, run the world. So the fact that Yidin could look beyond that, and they don't go by what things look like on the outside. They realize that, no, this is just outwardly, but in reality, Hashem is running the world. So again, like, like let's, let's think of ourselves, not the people in the mimer. Let's think of ourselves. So a person has a job, and the boss at work is not being nice to them, and uh, not treating them nicely. Is this Hashem, or is this the boss at work? How do most people feel in reality when it happens? Not you, Chazosham, the other people. We always know the truth, but the other ones. Most people uh, feel it's this boss, it's his fault. If not for him, this would have been like that. If not for him, it would have been like this. So basically, it's pretty much the same thing. I'm, rec- I'm looking at those that are mutza, they're just intermediaries, as if they're the ones in charge. So I go in an interview, the person interviews me and says, I don't like you, I don't want to hire you. You're very upset at the person. Maybe Hashem wanted you not to have that job. If a person gets all upset about the one who is hiring me, and, and because they're upset at me, and that's why I lost the job, in a sense, they're doing the same thing. They're attributing it to the intermediary more than the English term. Now, it's a little bit different because humans have choice, but that's the way they look at the sun and the moon and the constellations. It's very hard because if you know the laws of nature, it looks like everything's happening because of the natural order. I really heard this once, even from a from Jew, he's a from Jew, and it learns Torah, and learns, uh, does all the mitzvahs, but just his hashkafa, his outlook was very worldly. And he was telling me that in the school, they teach the children how the rain, it's all from Hashem, and you have to daven and pray for rain, and, and you pray this way, pray that way. He says, children have to learn the science. How does it actually rain? It was like, almost like, He's upset that they keep putting it on Hashem. They have to learn the science. How does it rain? When this and this happens, these conditions are such and such, that's how rain comes about. The person didn't realize, in a sense, what he is saying is almost like this. It's sort of a form of avodazara, like attributing things to nature rather than to Hashem. And nature is just the... Now, we don't deny the fact that there are conditions that make it rain. But again, who makes the conditions? It's Hashem. He sets up the whole thing. <clears throat> I'm sure this story happened to many people, but this is just an example. There's a part in davening before the Shema, we say, Hashem, help me that I should never ever be embarrassed in the future. I shouldn't be embarrassed and humiliated in the future. So one of the ways explaining this is, it's very humiliating when we're constantly giving so much attention to something external, and we don't realize it's the wrong, we're giving attention to the wrong thing. It's really Hashem, not the, not the things that I'm giving attention to. So the, I think of a mushal that comes to my mind, which is a, something that probably happened to a lot of people. And there's a thing called a wax museum. You ever heard of it? <coughs> so I, very often it happens where a person walks over to a policeman and asks him information, and he doesn't answer. So, you know, it's very rude of you. I'm asking you a question. And everybody starts laughing. Why is everybody laughing? Because it's not a policeman. It's a wax policeman. But it's made in such a way that it looks so real that you can think it's a real person. 
So imagine you're arguing with this guy, you're screaming at him and everybody else is laughing because it's, and then it's very embarrassing that I thought this was a person and I'm, and I'm getting all upset and all worked up. So in a sense, this is the way they are with, when you look at things on the outside, it looks very real that the stars, the moon, the sun, the constellations are having an effect on the way things are running in this world. So you didn't have the wisdom to look through the, the facade, look through the outside and see the premiers that they're only an ax in the chopper's hand. And really it's all coming from Hashem. Got it? This is, this is sort of just the beginning. Then we're gonna go and understand it on a, on a deeper level. Now in the back of those of you that have the Hebrew, I put down the terms. I just want to draw your attention to it. That's on page. How many of you have the Hebrew? Who doesn't have the Hebrew rather? Okay, more copies should be coming up. This is Yafar Bingo. So on the in the Hebrew, we're not going through everything, but just on top of the page, it says Kigars and Biana Khaitsu. That's one term. And that's uh, axe in the hands of the chopper. Number two, chamra lemora, tebusa l'shakya. The wine belongs to the owner. The thank you goes to the waiter. Number three is elakod Lakaya, the god of all gods. Where is the other one? Oz of Hashem is a I don't have it here. But that's the next one, the third one. That Hashem abandoned the world in the hands of the thing. Okay. So ultimately, it does look like these stars and moons and constellations have influence. Because we know that people who could read these things will say, I saw in the stars or the constellation that this and this is going to happen. And, and therefore, it looks as if they're in charge. But the reality is that it only looks that way, but really, you need pikkhus to understand. Now the river goes deeper into Dalit. Ready? If we go a little bit further, we'll make a little summary. We'll see how the mimer is sort of climbing from level to level. Um, um, so we're doing Dalit. maybe mushal. The message brings a marshal of a king and ministers. So in the marshal, the, the ministers are do have free choice. That's not a good marshal in a sense. The marshal is supposed to be that the stars, the moons, the constellations, they're like an axe. They have no free choice. But the marshal of ministers, they do have free choice. A minister could make his own choice whether I should help this person or not. So therefore, it's logical to assume if this is the mashal, shabchir ba'aduchsin, yichayil ligrim sheyashpia yeso leila shabach rabahem. That in the Gashmizdik arrangement, if I go to a minister or an officer, or I go to a congressman or a senator, I can get things that I would not maybe get from the king himself. So if someone is... In, is in a certain need. Let's say I have a field and I have a situation with my field and I need a certain favor. Who am I going to go to? I'll go to whoever in, is in charge of agriculture in the country and I'll speak to that person and ask him for uh, help. If someone's in education and I need uh, help in that field, I'll go to the person in the government that's involved in education. I don't go to the top, to the president because that person's involved with this department and they could make the decision, yes or no. So that means in the mushal, they actually could make decisions. And the mushal, I will gain if I'm nice to them, I'm close to them, and I honor them, I will gain something. But like about nimshal, it's not like in the nimshal with the stars and the constellations. They have no free choice and they can't make any difference. The person could bow to them from today till tomorrow. It shouldn't make any difference because they have no free choice. So move on is there based on this. Tell me when you start feeling that it's getting confusing. Let me know. <laughs> Are we there already? <laughs> it's not so confusing, no. Again, in the mushal, when someone says, I'm choosing the minister, 
it's, it, there's really basis for it because by choosing the minister, establishing, cultivating a good relationship with the minister will help you. He'll give you money for your projects. He'll uh, fight in, the, in, 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 the, in Congress to, to pass a law that's going to benefit you. He'll give you a loan, whatever it is that you need. Moving, it's understood. So when the Pekach says, I know no Mark, I choose the king. It's not because he'll get more benefits, but listen to this. How come this person says, I choose the king? Let me ask you a question practically. Imagine a person has a good relationship with the president of the United States of America, but he doesn't have a good relationship with the mayor of the city of New York and the people who are involved in running the city of New York. When he needs a favor, he needs uh, to fix something on his block in his city, he's gonna to go to the president of the United States. On the contrary, he'll get more out of his relationship with the local authorities than to go to the federal government. It's not their department. They're too high for that. Definitely not the president himself. So why does the Pekach say, no, I'll choose the king. He's actually gonna lose. So we see from this, the reason why the Pekach means he recognized that the king is greater. He'd rather have a relationship with the king who is a greater personality and it's a greater quality of a person than the relationship with the minister, even though he'll get more benefits from the minister. You follow? No, let's try that again. In other words, in Emmis, in truth, which relationship should be more valued? A relationship with a king or a relationship with a local officer? Forget about the benefits, just in terms of value, if I value the king. I'm talking about a king in, in the Torah way, someone who really has quality in his intellect and emotion and personality, he's a great person. And, and to have a relationship with a king is a much greater a rewarding thing than having a relationship with a local authority because he's a simple person, he's on a, a lower level. So I'm so concerned about the emiss and what's really better, what's really truthfully higher, uh, that, that means more to me than the monetary benefits that I can gain from the local person. That's the goal. Too quiet. <laughs> Again, if you're thinking in terms of mayor and president, I understand why you don't get me, because it was interesting having a relationship with the president, big deal. But we're talking about a king in the true sense of the word, let's say, Shleimah Melech, Davina Melech, Moshe Rabbeinu. You have the opportunity to have a relationship with Moshe Rabbeinu himself, or with one of his people that he appointed, and then you can get more benefits for your shaving. What would you rather? Of course, it's greater. It's a greater... It's a greater uh, spiritual thing to have a relationship with Moshe Rabbeinu, with the Melech himself. So that's what we're saying, Pikach. You have to have the wisdom to know what's primary and what's secondary. Yes, it's good to have the benefits, but isn't it much greater and better to have a relationship with someone that's so much higher and so much greater, which is the Melech? Are we getting closer? Got it? Okay. I see some head shaking. I'm happy. Good. So now let's apply this in the Nimshal to Hashem. The Ikra Tam Al Zed, the main reason why the nations of the world worship the sun, the moon, and the constellations, and the Eden don't worship it, they only worship Hashem, is It's not because the nations of the world make a mistake. And they think that the constellations and the sun and the moon have independent choice. And they didn't know the emmas that they don't, they're just like an axe in the hands of the chopper. It's deeper than that. The Shum is silent, but the nations of the world are eager at stone, what's really the primary and most important thing to them, she kabul to get the sustenance. And by Yidin, what's most important is to serve the king, to serve Hashem. So if the main thing is to get the sustenance, to get the benefits, let's turn the page. (coughs) 
Let's, we'll stop here for a second. So therefore, they're saying we're going to get much more out of our relationship with the local authorities, which is the sun, the moon, and constellation, than our relationship with Hashem himself. The Yidin know that by doing, by, their, by working on their relation with Hashem rather than the, than the other ministers, they won't have the same benefits, but they're more interested in the emiss of the relationship than the benefits. <clears throat> If you have any questions, ask me. Let's make it clear because as we're climbing <laughs> the staircase over here, every level goes, goes to the next level. So we have to understand this to get to appreciate the next level. So we're saying that we're not we're not like concerned only with stuff, right? Only with things that we can get. Right. We want something more than that. We want the MS of having a relationship with something which is the MS, a higher relationship, right? So in other words, it is true that it's possible, and later they'll we'll explain how, but just like in the marshal, by being and cultivating a good, solid relationship with the ministers, I will gain more benefits. But the other person says, I don't care about the benefits. That's not as important to me as having the opportunity to have a relationship with the melech himself. So we're soon going to explain that when you people worship idols, they're going to get hashpah from klipa. And that actually will be maybe more than someone who's not going to be doing that, but who wants Hashpah from Klippa? I want to be connected to Hashem. Hashpah means sustenance. In other words, to put this in very simple words before we go into a deeper, imagine if a person knows that by keeping the store open on Shabbos, he's going to make much more money. And another person says, I know I'll make much more money, but it's Shabbos. But I'll have my relation with Hashem the way it's supposed to be. That's more important to me than anything else. Same idea, just in more practical terms. So here's more of the English we didn't doesn't have yet. <coughs> and the Hebrew, even if you have the English, I want you to take the Hebrew because there are papers here that um, that are in the back, which are going to help us as references. Yeah, this one, the green. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Yaki. Okay. Comes to my mind the story, the famous story with the Alter Rebbe. Oops. What? The story of the Alter Rebbe, that it's a long story, but it was a chassid. They told the story how he became a chassid, that there was an incident that happened in his town. And uh, he so openly, the Alter Rebbe's Ruach HaKadosh, he lived in Vilna, he was one of the leaders in Vilna, but he was shocked at what happened. And he saw there's something about the Alter Rebbe that looks like maybe he is a great person. That was the first story. He never became a chassid, but it put certain doubts in his mind. What was the second story? Second story was that <clears throat> there were two people that, that came to him and they said that they uh, have a business and they were accused in, in the business, I think, working for the government. They were accused stealing money. Stealing money from the government is federal offense. They might get life imprisonment or even worse. And the lawyers told them that the case is so serious, he doesn't even think that it's possible to help them. So uh, the, the, the time for the case is coming up. 
They spent Shab- Shabbos in someone's house, which apparently was a chassid. And he said to them, why don't you go to the altar Rebbe? So they came to ask him advice. Do you think we should go? And he said, I think you should go. And do me a favor, when you come back, tell me what happened. So he went to the altar Rebbe. And they told the altar Rebbe their dilemma. Again, these are not chassidim, but they went because a chassid advised them that he helped so many people go to him. So the altar Rebbe said to them, I see that you're Torah scholars. What does it mean when the Gemara says that kingdom on earth is similar to kingdom above by Hashem? In what way is it similar? They weren't even interested in hearing the question and answering the question. That's not what they came for. Their life is in danger. They want advice how to get out of this. So they said, they don't know. And the Altarab said, I'll give you an answer. And he said to them, it means that just like the Gashmas, when you go to a king, first you walk in and you give the king the praise that he deserves. And then you make your request. By Hashem, it's the same thing, or the other way around. By Hashem, first we say the first three brachas, we praise Hashem. Okay, and then we make our requests. The reverse. We learn from Hashem how king is here. So they left. They go back to the lawyer and they're very frustrated. They wasted time, they wasted money. And they built up their hopes and turned into being nothing. They went back to the lawyer. The lawyer said, I'm looking over the case, there's really no hope. There's nothing I can tell you in court that's going to help. The only thing that might help is one thing. If you speak to the minister of education, the minister of um, the minister of, of uh, business, and you just plead with him, beg him, cry, tell him that it's a false accusation, the minister of justice, rather, he has the power to do something for you, that minister. How are we going to get to him? Who's going to let us speak to him? So he said, every day he goes for a walk in the royal garden. If you guys hide there, pay off the guard, hide in the garden. When he comes, just run out, fall by his feet and beg and plead for mercy. So they gave the guard money. And he said, when he goes like that, they can run out of their hiding place. And that's what happened. Somebody came and the guard realized this is not the minister of justice. So he told them like this, that don't come out. They thought he's saying, come out. So they run out and they follow in front of him and they're not crying and begging and pleading. And he said, I really feel bad for you, but I'm not the minister of justice. You have the wrong number, sorry. Anyway, so they ran because now they could get in trouble. What are they doing in the royal? Yes, I know. I know. What are you doing in the royal garden? How could, how could you be there? So the um, so they waited a few minutes, and uh, and they ran out, and suddenly they hear the minister calling them back. They say, "Okay, this is it. Now they're in double trouble." Calls them back and says, "I see you're a Jewish uh, man. I have a question. I'm actually the minister of education." And the king asked me a question. I'm thinking about it for three days. If you can give me a satisfactory answer, I'll do everything I can to save you. What's the question? It says in the Jewish Talmud that kingdom below is like kingdom above. In what way is it similar? What's the, what's the parallel? So of course, the first thing that came to my mind was the Alter Rebbe told them. They gave him the Alter Rebbe's answer. And he was very pleased with the answer. He says, if the king will be happy with my answer, I'll get you out of trouble. And sure enough, the king was uh, happy with the answer. He went to the minister of justice. He asked them for a favor to overturn their judgment and they became free. And that's how he became a chassid after that story. So what do you see here? You have to go to the right minister. Minister of justice helps with this. The minister of education helps with that. So that's with ministers. And therefore people feel, I'll go to the minister. I'll have much more than going to the king himself. Okay, to be continued. Thank you, Rabbi. Very welcome. Good morning. Or good afternoon. <laughs> good morning. The mine was sort of a little bit too big for the machine to stay. Yeah, figure that out. We have to put some parts.